Hi guys, so you know what's worse than not getting what you wanted? Getting what you wanted, especially when it comes to Brexit. Now, Owen Jones, who's a left-wing commentator and activist, someone who voted to remain in the European Union back in 2016, but claims to be no big fan of the EU, and would have preferred a different type of Brexit, one with Labour in charge. Now, Owen did a really good job at schooling Brexiteer Carol Malone on the issue of this charge that's coming in in 2022, which will apply to third countries. Now, Carl doesn't seem to understand that she voted and campaigns and still supports the idea of Britain being a third country. Anyway, let's hear the exchange. Look, we've got Brexit. Brexit's now permanent. We're going to be having Brexit now probably forever. We've left the European Union. I think almost all of us have agreed that's got to be respected. That's got to be ha that's going to happen. But I think people have got to stop pretending it's a cost free exercise where all the things people who wanted to leave happen and there are no costs. So all the reasons say Carol voted for Brexit and there are lots of legitimate reasons why people did vote to leave the EU. Actually, I'd love to hear some of these legitimate reasons to leave the EU. I've been asking people to send me the, their legitimate reasons for leaving the EU and I've heard nothing. I would actually like to hear some of them. I'm not a big fan of the EU. I voted for Remain on Balance. But the, this is what people said would happen. We're not a member of the European Union well, anymore. Why do they need to do it now when they didn't do it before? Yes, I know we were part of it. Why do they do it now when they didn't do it before? Look, it took me literally two minutes to find this information. What we're talking about here is the European Travel Information and Authorization System. And you can see here, I don't know if you can see on the screen, it says applicants will be able to apply via an official website and or app for mobile devices prior to the start of this, the operation of this system and will have to pay a fee of seven euros or it's about six pounds something. Okay, now it's coming in in 2022, not now, but 2022. But it was originally, the concept was created back in 2016. It's not something that was invented yesterday or today. It's a system that's been put together over a number of years and it's going to be implemented next year and it's going to apply to third countries. Carl and other Brexiteers like Nigel Farage and Boris Johnson campaigned for Britain to become a third country. Now, I think it was a bad idea for Britain to become a third country. People like myself were saying there's going to be a huge cost with Britain becoming a third country. But the response from Brexiteers was, we don't care. It's a small price to pay for sovereignty. Empty supermarket shelves is also another small price to pay for sovereignty. Although the people who are shouting the loudest about sovereignty won't go hungry. And it will pass. Because we remember the European but, Union. Yes, but why? Yes, but That's why do we have a good to? Question. Why, why is it necessary to impose a six pound charge? Here? This is, you know, Owen, and you're being. Why is it necessary? Why does it matter? This is a decision made by the European Union. If the UK was still a member, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't have to pay this price. This applies to third countries. You wanted to become a third country. You got what you wanted. It's like somebody who ends their gym membership. And then the next day arrives at the gym expecting to be able to use the equipment. And they say, no, you can't. Yeah, but, but you must treat me with respect. <laughs> no, but you're no longer a member. You're no longer paying your fees. I'm sorry, you can't, be, you can't come in. How would the other people think if we allowed you in without paying? I, I would love for Carl here to experience that firsthand. You know, end your gym membership or tennis club membership or whatever, membership of any club. And then try and go there the day after and see if they let you in and use the equipment or use the privileges of membership. Being very, um, you're being very calm about leaving the EU. You, th you thought it was one of the most hideous things on the planet. No, I didn't. But this is just. No, I didn't. That's is, not true. This, I even well, debated supporting just, leaving the EU. Actually, well, exactly. Like that's that's the point. This is spite and divisiveness oh, on the part of the EU. This is something that was created back in 2016 and applies to third countries. It's nothing specific to Britain. You idiot. If I found this information out in two minutes, how can she not do this? Because she doesn't care. Because she's 
died in the world Brexit here. It applies to third countries. You know, there are other countries around the world that are, that are third countries apart from Britain. This is not Britain specific, you idiot. I mean, you know, and it's a very odd move considering that they're, they're quite, a lot of the countries within the EU are very dependent on UK traffic for holiday. They're very, they're very dependent well, it, on but, tourism. But it's a security system. It's about protecting people's security. What is wrong with these? Like, it's a, it's a system that has to be implemented and there's a cost related to it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand what the huge problem is here. Anyway, if you didn't want to pay this, then surely you would say, well, wouldn't it be better we're part of the Euro European Union then? Hang on. This is part of something called the ETIAS scheme, which applies yeah. to all non-EU countries. So it's, it's everyone who's not in the EU. Yeah. So now the question is, is it right it's actually non-Schengen countries, not EU countries. Owen, when Tory MP Peter Bone says this is anti-Britishness in the wake of Brexit. <laughs> Peter Bonehead. Of course he'd say this is anti-British because Peter Bone doesn't understand this system. Or what's probably worse is that he does understand, but he's pretending not to understand in order to feed into the, you know, this angry narrative of Brexiteers. No, look, freedom of movement has ended. One of the main reasons people voted to leave the European Union was to end freedom of movement. Freedom of movement is now ending, and the quid pro quo of that is we're not members of the European Union, and we are now subject to visa charges. If you're not members, if it's the same with other countries. There's several other countries on the planet where in order to enter, you have to pay a visa charge. If we were still members of the European Union, there would be freedom of movement and we wouldn't be subject I to these visas. I think it's quite a big story, this, Carol, isn't it? Because it's going to increase costs for people going on, you know, relatively cheap, sunny holidays. And I think, but I think it also reaffirms in a lot of people's minds that they were quite right to vote to leave this, this <laughs> controlling <laughs> organisation. So, OK, OK, I think we've reached peak Brexit here. So she's saying... It, the UK left and now it has to pay a fee and it's right that we left because we have to pay a fee but if we had stayed we wouldn't have to pay the fee or am I missing something here no, which is it? not it's like saying when I was a, when I was a member of the gym I didn't have to pay to use each of the equipment but now that I'm outside and I have and I want to use the equipment I have to pay to use each of the equipment I have to pay a different fee, but that's a that's a that's an argument for no longer being a member. What? Members so, anymore? Tell me, so, tell me something. Why did they try and um, stop jabs and uh, vaccinations to the EU to to Britain? Was that the EU exported? I think it was about twenty million vaccines to the UK during the pandemic. How many vaccine and hundreds of millions of vaccines around the world? The EU did that. How many vaccines did Boris Johnson's government export during the pandemic to countries be outside the UK itself? Was that because we're no longer a member or was that out of spite and divisiveness, which I believe this I is? I think, to be honest with you... There we have it. I believe it is. She believes that the European Union is implementing something that it formalised back in 2016. It started back in 2016 as some sort of spite against Britain. It's a spite against Britain, all, even, even if it applies to all third countries. Just, just happens to include Britain. The EU totally messed up their vaccine programmes. And actually, yeah, yeah. Yes. Ma I think Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, has a lot to answer for about how they spoke about AstraZeneca. I M Macron is not the EU. Macron is the president of, of an individual, of an independent country. I don't like the way that you sometimes see, and unfortunately Owen engaged in this as well, but Brexiteers tend to link statements of Macron to the EU. But Macron does not speak for the EU. He speaks for France. I think there is a case to argue there. But this is, but this is, I'm afraid, look, I'm no, I'm no fan. I'm no big fan of the European Union and I'm not going to defend their, their terrible vaccine strategy. They, they have caught up with us and Spain has overtaken us on vaccines as it happens. When it comes to these visa charges, however, that's what happens if you leave a block and you don't have freedom of movement anymore. What do you expect? No, I keep coming back to you, Owen, just because there are, in the Express, they've got a different view of it. And there, Nigel Farage says, this shows the EU is collapsing. 
<laughs> so, so, well, if Nigel Farage has said the EU is collapsing, then it must mean the EU is collapsing. Um, Nigel Farage has said that the EU has, is collapsing since 2002. Okay. Isn't it funny how Brexiteers like Nigel Farage and the Express will one day say the EU is this powerful dictatorship and then in the next, you know, on the same page, in the front page the next day, they'll say, or Nigel Farage will say, how the EU is falling apart. This is the end of the EU. Yes, the EU introducing a seven euro cost on visas for third countries is the end of the EU. Really? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?